Hello, YouTube. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the long awaited part three of the Blue Iris Deep Stack Home Assistant series. In this video, I'm going to cover how to connect Blue Iris to Home Assistant. We're also going to take a look at how to add Blue Iris camera feeds to your Home Assistant dashboard, how to send motion notifications, as well as how to send alert images from Blue Iris to Home Assistant. Then we'll take a look at how to use those notifications and images and automations in Home Assistant so that you can take actions when motion is detected, such as turn on lights, send mobile notifications with alert images, and more. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, I'll leave links to those episodes down in the description. If you've already got Blue Iris and DeepStack up and running, you may not need to worry about watching those, but just in case I discuss a topic that you're unfamiliar with, it was likely previously covered in part one or two. A quick recap of where we're at. In part one, we downloaded and installed Blue Iris, DeepStack GPU for Windows, CUDNN, and the CUDA Toolkit. Then we completed some base configuration of Blue Iris, such as where to store the footage, how to configure Blue Iris and DeepStack to automatically start when Windows starts, and some other basics. In part two, we added a camera to Blue Iris and configured motion detection, and we took a look at some more settings in the interface. Hi. Welcome to the channel. My name's Jeff. I cover all sorts of smart home stuff here. I'm just your average professional IT nerd. With over 25 years in the industry, I've learned a bit along the way about programming and networking and all sorts of other crazy stuff that most people don't find interesting. My goal with this channel is to take that knowledge and apply it to smart home tech to make the complicated stuff less complicated so that everyone can have a smart house the easy way. I invite you to come with me on my journey to discover all the crazy stuff along the way as I make the dumb stuff smart and the smart stuff easy. With this being the third episode in the series, Blue Iris and DeepStack certainly need no introductions, so let's cut to the quick. The first thing we're gonna need to do is add Blue Iris to Home Assistant. To begin this process, log on to your Blue Iris server, open the console, and then open the settings dialog. Click the users tab, and then click the plus. Enter a username and password for the Home Assistant account, then set it to LAN only so that it cannot be used for external access. Check the boxes for administrator and remote management. And I also check the box to exempt this account from remote access status alerts. On the web server tab, click the advanced tab. I limit access to my Blue Iris server by IP. By default, this list is empty, meaning that any IP address can connect. You can add as few or as many IPs as you want here, but if you choose to enter any IPs, you'll need to be sure to add the IP of your Home Assistant server. Now we need to add the integration to Home Assistant. This integration is available via Hacks. If you don't have Hacks, I already did a video previously on how to add that. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. In Hacks, click Integrations. Then on the bottom right, click Explore and Download Repositories. Search for Blue Iris, then click Blue Iris NVR. Click Download in the lower right. Once that's complete, click Settings on the left and then click Devices and Services. In the lower right, click Add Integration. Search for Blue Iris, and then click Blue Iris NVR. In the Setup section, enter the IP address or host name of your Blue Iris server. The port will be the port shown on the Web Server tab in the Blue Iris settings. If you have not configured an SSL certificate on Blue Iris, then leave SSL disabled. Next, we need to configure Mosquito Broker on Home Assistant. Click Settings, then Add-ons. Then click Add-on Store, and type MQTT. Click Mosquito Broker, then click Install. Make sure Start on Boot is selected, then click Start. Then, on the left panel, click Settings, then People, then Users. In the lower right, click Add User. I just name the user MQTT and give it a password. Make sure it's set to only log in from the local network. Then, on your Blue Iris server, navigate into the settings again and click on the Digital and IoT tab. Under MQTT, click Configure. Enter a client ID. I just use BIDS. If you aren't familiar with MQTT, just enter BIDS. We'll go into greater detail on MQTT in a future video. Then, enter the IP address for your Home Assistant server and provide the username and password for the Home Assistant user that you added. Then, click Test. A bunch of stuff will scroll by and it should end like you see in the image here. If it doesn't, Make sure you didn't make any typos and that the Mosquito Broker is running on your Home Assistant server. Now, we need to configure an MQTT alert on a camera. Choose a camera, right click it, and select Camera Settings. Then, on the Alerts tab, click the On Alert button. 
Click the plus in the lower left corner. Configure your system as shown here. If you'd like to alert for more than just people, modify the required AI objects field. This will send an MQTT alert to Home Assistant whenever one of those objects is detected by the camera. You'll need to configure the exact same thing for each camera that you would like to enable the motion sensor for. Click OK twice to get back to the Alerts tab, and now click the On Reset button. Click the plus in the lower left and configure your system as shown in the image. This clears the motion sensor when the motion has stopped. If you don't do this, then once the motion sensor is set, it'll never clear. Now. As for the motion detection entities on HA, they're created automatically by the integration. We just needed to configure the alerts to make them work. The image here on the right shows some of the motion sensors for cameras in my setup. So what can we do with these motion detectors now? I wrote an automation to turn on the exterior floodlights whenever a person is detected by my exterior cameras. In addition to turning on my floodlights, a push notification is also sent both to my phone and my wife's phone with an image of the detected person. Now. I'll admit, when you're first setting this up, until you fine tune all your detections, you're gonna get quite a number of nonsense detections. So best not to have this thing taking any crazy actions until you get it all dialed in. This one is my favorite. DeepStack thinks my mailbox is a person. If the conditions are just right, when a car drives by and the headlights light up my mailbox, DeepStack will falsely identify it. Then the floodlights turn on, a notification is sent to my phone, Every time it happens, I bump the confidence level up for detections one more notch. It's been a week now since the last time it happened, so here's hoping. Let's take a look at those automations. Now, I wanna start by saying that this may not be the most efficient way of writing this automation, but it works for me, so I'm perfectly happy with it. It's actually broken into three separate automations. The first handles the detection and the notification. The second, handles turning on the lights, and the third handles turning them off again. Let's start at the top. First, I created an input Boolean called exterior motion sensor control that I use to arm and disarm this automation. That way, when I'm out sitting on my deck after dark enjoying a whiskey, I don't have to worry about the floodlights flipping on and blinding me. I just added it to my dashboard so I can quickly enable and disable the routine. When it's enabled, it's green. When it's disabled, it's red. In addition, you can see that I also added chips for all the exterior motion sensors so I can tell at a glance which ones are detecting people or not. And I've also added a bunch of contact sensors so I can easily see which doors or windows are open. If you need more info about that, check out the dashboard video I did where I covered that type of stuff. I'll leave a link in the description. The last thing I wanna mention quick about this dashboard page is the leaving neighborhood button. We like to hang out with our neighbors, but they live close enough that Home Assistant sometimes has difficulty figuring out if we're actually in the home zone or if we're away. I have an automation that opens the garage door when we cross from not home to home. And I also have an automation written that closes the garage door when we go from home to not home in case we accidentally leave it open. Because of the imprecise nature of GPS on mobile phones, we used to stand in the neighbor's yard and you could see our garage door opening and closing and opening and closing, super annoying. So when we're going for a walk around the block or going to hang out at the neighbors, I just click that button to tell HA that we are not in fact leaving the neighborhood and it disables the garage door up and down and keeps the firewall port forwarding enabled so we can communicate with HA among other things. Again, some of that stuff has been previously covered and the stuff that hasn't been covered yet, that's a different video. Anyhow, to create the exterior motion sensor override, navigate to settings, devices and services and then on the top, click Helpers. In the lower right, click Create Helper, then select Toggle from the list. Note that there are actually two for this, one for me to use to control the automation, and the other that I use to trigger the other two automations that I spoke of. You'll see in a minute, just create two. Name one of them something like Sensor, and name the other one like Sensor Control, or something like that, like I did here. Next up, you'll need to create a timer this will be used to control how long the lights stay on once the automation is triggered. For the detection and notification automation, I added all my exterior cameras as triggers so that when the motion detected changes to on, the automation is triggered. Next, I check to make sure it's after sunset or before sunrise and that the motion sensor control is not disabled.
Then I turn on the exterior motion sensor helper that we created and then start the timer. The timer controls how long the lights will be on when the automation is triggered. Then delay for two seconds and then check each camera one by one to determine which camera sent the alert that triggered this automation. All of these do the same, so we'll just take a look at the garage door camera one. If motion is detected, then take a snapshot of the alert camera and then send an alert to both of our phones that contains the alert image. To receive alert images in Home Assistant, we need to define the alert camera entities in configuration.yaml as shown here. These are MQTT topics that are defined as cameras. The second part of the topic needs to match the short name of your camera in Blue Iris. The name field can be whatever you like, as can the unique ID, as long as it begins with camera dot. I'm not sure why the editor is complaining about the image encoding sections, but they do work and they are necessary. Then for each camera you want alert images from, you'll need to add an additional action under the alerts on alert section on each camera in Blue Iris, as shown here. To add camera feeds to the dashboard, simply add a picture entity card and choose the camera you'd like for the entity. My cameras are configured as shown here. The second automation is very simple. When the exterior motion sensor changes from off to on, turn on the floodlights. The final automation is also very simple. When the timer finishes, confirm that the motion sensor is on, then turn off the motion sensor and turn off all the floodlights. There are lots of other things you can do now that you've got Blue Iris integrated with Home Assistant. For example, when someone rings my doorbell, I snapshot the doorbell camera and then send a notification to our phones with a photo of who's at the door. I made a video about how to do that already, so check the description for a link. Or if you've got interior cameras, you can use them as part of a home security system. When no one is home, arm the system. If any interior cameras detect a person, then set off the alarm. No, I don't have all that done yet, but when I do, I'll post a video of how to set it all up. I'm still working on adding everything I need to complete that system. Although I do have a wireless alarm pin pad already here for that project. I'll be sure to let you guys know how that project is going. If you've configured ALPR or automatic license plate recognition, you can have HA tell you who pulled in the driveway before they even get out of the car. Use your imagination. The possibilities really are endless. Let me know in the comments what type of stuff you're doing with your cameras. I'm always looking for great new ideas to implement at my house. Who knows? Maybe I'll even feature your idea in a future video. Speaking of future videos, I've got a lot of great ideas in the hopper already, including an updated video about how to install Home Assistant onto an Intel Nook, a deep dive into my dashboard, Intel Nook 11 enthusiast unboxing and M.2 SSD installation, setting up guest SSID connected device counts, and a primer on TCP IP and DNS for those of you interested in learning more about networking. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell to be notified of these exciting videos and more. If you'd like to support the channel, as well as receive exclusive benefits, such as periodic copies of my automations, dashboard, and configuration YAML files, early access to ad-free videos, access to the FHT Discord channel, free t-shirts, exclusive giveaways, and more, please consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com. All the code for today's video is also posted there, so you can just download it and copy paste instead of having to pause the video and type it in yourself. Thank you to all my current patrons. You guys rock. If you'd like to join them, I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you for your support. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please go ahead and smack that like button for me to tell YouTube that this video didn't suck and it should be shown to more people. I hope you found today's video informative and entertaining, and I hope that I was able to teach you something. I hope you liked today's shirt, link in the description, and I look forward to seeing all your smiling faces in the next video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?